to you, my fellow Dark Ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? And yeah, we have a bit of a situation. Ectoplasm. So let me try to explain this situation for you. We have 107,000 ectoplasm left. That means I can order 10,000 more spectre coils. That is lovely. So in total, I'm going to have 140,000 spectre coils, but I need 772,000. So we're not really doing great. I can't really add more bonsai pots because our TPS is going to fall and I thought maybe I should change my approach. This machine that you see in front of you doesn't really work. It doesn't give you a single ectoplasm. And yes, I do understand I have a single ectoplasm in my inventory, but that's because I broke a leaf. So I'm assuming a tree farm is out of the question. What else can we do? I do have a feeling that the killer Joe is our best option. Yeah, let us check how many we got. Oops, stop hitting me. You stupid idiot, I'm your boss. Uh, we got 33. Yeah, maybe that's something that we have to design. Although, we need to do a few things. We have looting 50, which doesn't seem to work. But we also have unbreaking 3, which we can improve a bit. Yeah, I don't think any of these are going to help us. We just need unbreaking, we need to repair the swords, and we need to scale it up. But before doing that, we need to make this farm a bit more lag friendly, and I was thinking maybe we switch the item docks with conduits? I don't really think it's going to make that much of a difference, but let us see. 24 FPS. Awesome. Let me remove them and see how it goes. Just remember the 24. Yeah, the FPS drop was because of the bonsai pots and not the item ducts. You know, we're up by one or two frames, but it's fine. Anything small is going to help. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't do conduits. That's 1000 bonsai pots. I have to configure 1000 conduits. And with this lag, it's kind of impossible. So we're just going with opaque item ducts. Maybe that helps. It really doesn't. I even went to the configs to see if I can... Whoop. I should really move this. But I was going to say, I even went to the configs to see if I can disable the animation. It's fine, we will go with the spawners. Let us get back to the issue of the spirits. So yes, the killer Joe is able to kill them with the correct sword, but it only kills one at a time. And we really want it to go a bit faster, so we're going to need more killer Joes. Uh, we need zombies. The good thing about zombies is that they find you. This one is stupid. Oh, this is fun. I haven't automated it yet. And probably I'm not going to do that. Okay, let us give it a test. It's actually quite good. Better than the bonsai pots with only two. Huh, maybe we do this. Okay, this is our setup. Six mob duplicators, 12 killer joes. And yes, they do overlap, but that's kind of the point. I really want them to kill them as fast as possible. Also, this is just going to be a test run to see how fast it's going to work. Ouch. Well, some of them do get spawned down there, but we can have a conduit facade. To be honest with you, it's not that bad. And I do have a feeling it makes a huge difference. Okay, this increases our production by, I don't know, 30 or 40%, but it's not good enough. My main problem is that I'm not really sure. Can you put the Spectre coils inside the Draconic Evolution portal? Come on, stop hitting me. I'm wearing the Infinity Armor, you jerk. Okay, this one is not spawning any mobs, so we should be able to take the portal out, like so, and make a new one. I don't think they're going to fall down. Nope. Okay, this is a mess. Well, one got teleported, literally by accident. This is the worst time in my life. I'm out of feathers. Yeah, this is much better. Basically, what I want to know is that can we push them a bit? Let us try this one more time. You can push them. Interesting. Yes, the solution is extremely simple. With four fans fully upgraded, we can cover the entire thing. I know this is going to be incredibly messy, but let us give it a very small test. We shall activate the fans. Everyone instantly goes to the overworld. And how fast are we killing them? That is the question. Holy. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's stupid. Uh-oh. Something went wrong. What went wrong? Oh, this place was not chunk loaded and we got loot bags. But you can't see the rate that it's working, right? It's a bit crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's far better than the bonsai pots. Uh, we need to disable it though, because we have to change a few things. So I just made a bit of a redesign. What the hell? Oh, the sugar. Again, this time let's just make a bunch. We want them to be teleported over here, literally in the center. And yeah, this is the wrong one. This is the correct one. It's fine. They will despawn after 40 seconds. Let us check. <gasps> I turned it off. No, I wanted to set up the dislocator, but we have a huge problem with loot bags. Oh, the item repairer from actually additions is essentially garbage. Look, it's like one durability every second. It's not much, but it could take like an hour just to repair one sword. So first off, the system that we have over here works fantastically well. I had a huge issue with loot bags because if you keep the artifact one in your inventory, it's going to take an MBT tag and then you can't really input it or export it. Also, this is very loud. Uh, let me turn it off first. So one of the items 
Item Collectors actually does not have any filters, so it's going to collect the loot packs as well. Unfortunately, in order to export it into a trash can, I could not use a translocator, which would have been really fast, so I'm using Applied Energistics. There's a storage boss on Extract and an Export boss with the filters. Now it's keeping up and we're not having any more problems with loot packs. The other problem that you might notice is that yes, we have so many damaged swords, and I literally just switched the swords, and every time they kill something, they take one durability damage, so we need to be able to repair them really fast. Since the repair doohickey from actually additions is kind of garbage, uh, we're going to go with mending. And then, you know, we put it inside an ender IO tank. Also, the actually addition thing is garbage for repairing swords, but for this, it's amazing. It's just too durability. No boy, you have no idea what a horrible day this is, uh, because yeah, everything worked fine, but we were lagging. I think we were down to 12 TPS or something, which is really bad. So I brought the spawners over here, we're using a fan to push them down. I do have mending and unbreaking on the swords, and we do have a filtering system so that they will be repaired. And the entire reason that we can run the game smoothly is that my farm in the crops area is offline. Then again, maybe not. We seem to be fine. So what if we chunk load you again? See what happens. Also, there are so many machines which cause unnecessary lag. One of them was this, the Chaos Crucible. I did use creative tanks, correct? And it was still making us liquid chaos, which I think we have a decent amount in here. Holy. Well, it crafted a lot. <laughs> but when I remove the recipe, I think we're good. And how fast are we getting ectoplasm? Not great. Oh, yeah, that's the thing with conduits. Sometimes you just get one stack. I just did some calculations. I AFK'd for a bit to see how many ectoplasms that we're going to get. And shockingly enough, we're getting exactly 20 per second. That sounds quite a bit, but we do need like 6.7 million more ectoplasm. And that is like 92 more hours? I can't really go any faster than that, because then we're gonna lag. There's no point. I never thought that I have to AFK for ectoplasm. So I activated the farm in the end, and I disabled these guys, and now we're up to 30 three per second. That is a super massive increase. You know, just like that, from 92 hours, we're down to like, I don't know, 60? Therefore, I have been thinking, what if we have two of them? It's not really great to transfer everything between dimensions, but let's see how it goes. Ah, oh, well, you can't have eight. That's not possible. This is the maximum. Other than that, we're going to just lag. So it's going to be 33 per second, and it's going to take 60 hours. Or so. Well, at least I can order 10,000 more Spectre Coils. No? 491. I mean, my biggest issue is that I have no idea what else to do, because what am I missing here? I tried everything. The problem with making a mob farm in this mod pack is that you can't really try anything in creative mode. Because I mean, if you go to a creative world and you design a mob farm, you're like, okay, that works fine. Then you come here, everything lags. So yeah, I had to improve it one more time, but I think this time it was the final time. Why? I always go to the wrong place. Yes, the correct place. I transferred everything to the end, our TPS is fine, and we have six mob duplicators which are making us spirits. I can go a bit higher than that, but I'm actually scared. As a result, we are getting 38 ectoplasm per second, which is amazing. I mean, it has been running for a while, we're not lagging, so it should be fine. Anyways, over the past two or three episodes when we were making ectoplasm, maybe you guys were screaming at the screen that this is the only way. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but by the time that I'm making this video, you're actually watching when I was making the infinity armor. So I'm like six episodes ahead and well... What can you do? I have also spent so much time on ectoplasm that I kind of neglected our own base. The problem is the crafting core, which just finished. This guy requires three quarter of a million RF per tick in order to operate and yes, we don't have enough power. Through the energy crystals from Draconic Evolution, we are providing a fraction of that. I think it's like 100,000. I think it's this crystal? No. Yeah, and that fraction is 126,000. It's nothing. So for the moment, let us come up with a very temporary fix. And I really mean very temporary. We need some solar panels. Yes, it's night time. But I'm assuming if we take a nap, it should be fine. Oh yeah, finally we're keeping up with the power. <laughs> Good. Very soon we need to do more crafting core recipes. I don't think they're going to be as expensive as this one, but we need to fix the power situation. I think we are still going to go with solar panels because we would be able to upgrade them relatively easily. Yeah, if we upgrade them, this is nothing. It gives you half a million RF. And besides, we have to do them for the quest. So let us do that. But as our power reserve, we can't really go with capacitor banks anymore. I mean, we can, but maybe I have to go down to bedrock. So I was thinking that we go with the induction matrix from mechanism that has a higher capacity. The problem is our applied energistic system, or at least this version of it, because it cannot craft these things. Hence, we're going to cheat and use crafters. Oh boy, you have so many recipes. Induction matrix is a very expensive recipe because it does require a ton of steel casings from mechanism. I'm not sure if this is something that we can animate. I know you can place it down because I used to use it for decorations. You can animate it, lovely. If you guys remember, there's also a machine called optimized assembly which gives you a cheaper recipe, but 
I guess the bond of animation is cheaper? Well, it does seem that if you're hyper careful and you set the recipes manually, you can't do it with your applied energistic system. But you have to set in every single pattern manually, otherwise it's not gonna work. And by manually, I literally mean remove every one of these and you, and you know, just drag and drop stuff. Yeah, I guess it seems to work. I gave up crafting with applied energy states cause that's really not gonna happen. Instead, what we have down here is a set of crafters from Ender.io which are making us the ultimate induction cell in a chain. You know, you just pump in the items, you get the tablet, you get the different types of energy cells, and then you combine them all together to get ultimate induction cell. So we're just gonna vein mine the capacitor banks. Oh, I need you to kind of forgot. Another very small point is that we need to make this a bit chunkier. Yeah, this will do. It will have an internal space of 3x3. Three three. But just before we forget, let us have our output hatches. And I'm not really sure if in this version of Minecraft we can use a builder's wand. Oh, we can. Lovely. Also, FYI, one of the reasons that I'm a bit worried is that we don't have any power. Anywho, on the top we shall have an induction port. And for the moment a few cryostabilized flux ducts so that we can at least have some sort of a power. So we have four ultimate induction providers that should be a decent amount of power that can get in. And well, three ultimate induction cells for the moment. And we have a capacity of 614 billion? That sounds about right. I also believe the only thing that we have to do is to hook up this one to you and the base should have power. Energy crystals are being charged up, we're consuming 1 million RF per tick. Okay, we're fine. And just to be able to transfer power without any hiccups to our crafting core, we're gonna take the phantom face, and I guess we can put it somewhere around here. I also brought some boosters, but I don't know, should I put it on top of you or on top of the core? Well, I guess we're going to know. Yeah, it works. 28 blocks. I have no idea how we are generating 5.5 million RF per tick just with solar panels, but uh, let's upgrade them as well. I have set up a new crafting core with 8 pedestals, and now we should be able to make better solar panels. That was instant. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> and a bit crazy. And this is far more fun than sieving. It's just that why do we have 60? Oh, it went in here. We have one stack. So to upgrade it to the higher tier one, which is going to be neutronium, and it's going to generate us... What? 8 million RF. Okay, it's not that bad. We just need the Ender Modular Solar Panel. It's fine. We shall have recipes for this. And I believe you're going to need a decent supply of Ender Dust. Oh, it has a block. I like things that have blocks. So there you go. We shall have two blocks. And well, you know the drill. Lovely. We have the Ender Dust on auto crafting. So now I'm assuming I can order 64 of them? Yes. Perfect. It's not just because of power generation, I also need the RAKs for one of the metals over here. And yes, I kind of forgot you need more than 64. You need two stacks. Since we don't have our computer anymore, I was thinking maybe we can have some screens. To show that we have infinite power. Do you notice a resemblance? No, probably not. I don't grow old. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Nuclear Craft. A machine which consumes 26,000 RF per tick and this is the speed. That's it. That is the speed. Let us compare it to an Ender.io machine which consumes only 585 RF per tick. Yeah, I'm also surprised. But I have the recipe in. I'm just waiting for the Ender Modular Solar Panel. Well, we had one stack that gives us 16 Neutronium Solar Panels. Amazing. And now we just want to go to Infinity. Oh boy. Oh, it's Lunar Dust. Lunar Dust is fine. This one has EMC. Who cares? I'm still waiting for solar panels and I just wanted to give you a very small explanation uh, regarding the spirits. In one of the episodes, I tried several methods in order to farm them and well, this is the result. You can kill them with a potion if your aim isn't garbage. Yeah, and you get the ectoplasm, correct? So essentially my first idea was that we're going to have a potion diffuser and that is actually a creative tank with potion of harming. And you see the particle effects, correct? It does kill them, but it doesn't drop the ectoplasm. Then I thought, ah, we're going to have a chemical drawer, fill it in with the potion, and well, it kills them, but no ectoplasm. And I even went with Botania. It also kills them, but no ectoplasm. Just wanted to let you know I tried everything, except using splash potions on a dispenser, which is kind of boring. Also, we can have the remaining neutronium solar panels, and if I'm not wrong, a few of the infinity versions, like so, 48. We can't even pump in that much power. Oh, these look nice and fancy. Also, at this stage, uh, we don't really care about upgrades. I could have also made a creative generator, but this is also nice. Besides, I need the RAK. So I have wonderful news. Uh, we have the pink slime singularity. We have some extra jade singularity because I forgot to turn off the machine. We also have the draconium seed as well as eggplants. So literally the only thing that we are waiting for in order to make chaos planks is the specter coil. I mean, we can still make a few. I have 210,000 of it. That's amazing. I think since we have set up the farm, I ordered 30,000. Until today, each episode, I did manage to only order 20,000. 
this is crazy. Another very important thing is that I think next episode we're going to have all the chaos ingots that we're going to need. Because you see, I have almost 500 here. Here is half a stack more Casadorian metal. And I think I just need 11 more. I'm waiting for the infinite chaos bubble. That's it. Oh, and yes, we have more chaos ingots here. Actually, I just need 10 more Casadorian ingots. Because instead of making 58 plates and gears and metals, we made 59 just in case we need to copy them. For the chaos plank, aside from all the creative items that we need, all the chaos ingots that we need, we also need wands of animation. And if you guys remember, in order to make a wand of animation, what we're going to need is a few mob duplicators. And I just forgot one ingot. So there you go, one more stack of mob duplicators. We shall have some lime matter, some reinforced exoskeleton, I believe yellow plastic, some sunny quartz singularities which we already have, a bit of opinium quartz, mob duplicators. Oh, bioluminescence is a drop. Oh, we have enough. I thought we we're not going to have enough. Since we have made the farm, this is going to be the fourth time. I'm telling you, the farm is amazing. If I'm not wrong, this is going to be the recipe for half a stack of wands of animation. And yes, it is very true. We only need 29, but I'm lazy to, you know, remove three, put it back here. We're just going to make half a stack. It's easier. We had most of the items, but one of the items that I kind of missed was the ironwood singularity. The block itself does not have any EMC, so we need to spawn it. We can also just craft it, but we require 30,000 and it takes a bunch of time. I think spawning it is going to be faster. Also, I had 10,000 prism, but I think we need to spawn them again. From the recipe of the wand of animation, we're not missing that many items. Ironwood is going to be ready very soon. Soul crystal, I have to farm for it, but we are also missing complex earth staff of darkness. If I remember this correctly, we are going to need a bunch of these mana infused ingots. Each one required half a stack. I need half a stack. So that is 16 stacks. Let's order 2000. Oh, it's fine. We have it over here. Don't you worry. We can just dupe it. Yes, we can easily craft it. The reason that we can easily craft it is that uh, when I was making blocks of insanium, I was not paying attention. So we have a lot of shards. That takes care of most of the items except the flower. We need the rune of earth and air. I have been checking and unfortunately, yes, we do have enough rune of earth, but not air. I'm not going to craft a single rune. We're just going to fight the guardian of Gaia. And by fighting, I just mean like whack him a few times you're not dropping ruins jerk yes we're getting close well i fought him 17 times we have nine that is a perfect number exactly half a stack i need to fight a few ant lions and this time we also need to take the eggs we need two per each omen ingot and we do need eight omen ingots how many did we need well it doesn't really matter it's less than half a stack it was a very laggy thing to do but i think we're done yeah we have 35 and yes you do get the hammer and it's invisible we just take some of the eggs and go home oh this is amazing the staff does not stack this is gonna be fun maybe we should use some shulker boxes oh and a bit of a problem this is the wrong one. <laughs> I was using the exotic amplification rod and unfortunately I had to make the infused amplification rod. Very important. Also, I think we need more mana. You see, I did not pay attention. We screwed up Lordcraft. Such an amazing mod. We should also have a bunch of ironwood singularities, hopefully. It's day 999. We start making wands of animation. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few seconds, it's going to be day 1000. Yes. 1000 days. And I thought, since this is a huge milestone, we started with love. No, but I'm still crafting. We have a bunch of ones of animations and, well, these are the ones that are left. I also put in all the chaos ingots that we need in order to make the chaos planks, so we don't need any more for this. And since we have a decent supply of infinite chaos bubbles, uh, let us make the Casadorian metal. I'm hoping it's decent. Oh, we need nine more. Well, at least now with the solar panels and the induction matrix, it's going to be way faster. I'm a bit lazy to wait for the final one. We don't really need to have 32 ones of animation. 31 is more than enough. Then again, the singularity is ready. So there you go. That's half a stack. It's far better to have a wand of animation than having a complex earth staff of darkness. So in the meantime, the final Casadorian ingot is also ready. That is exactly 58. I mean, we have the recipe, all the materials are inside. We have enough chaos bubbles. So let's make another one just in case. I think if everything goes well, in three episodes, we should have the 29 chaos planks because we still need to make the other metals, all the creative items, and also automate the maximum compact machine. Maybe it's something that you can animate. I'm not sure, but we do need to make the one. Just before we wrap up today's episode, there are a few things that I want to mention. One is that uh, you just saw the episode for the ultimate stew and yeah, as some of you guys mentioned, you can change the plum. There is another plum here. I don't know how I got confused. Secondly, there was a good suggestion, which I have also been thinking for a while, and that is to upgrade the draconic armor into multi armor. I think you're right. And this is much more useful than the infinity armor. Also, for the first time in our lives, eh, we have something to charge it up. Do you charge it up? 
lovely. So now we have an extra suit just in case we need that. And of course the final thing that I really want to try and do is the creative cobblestone generator. Aha! First I thought this is super cheap, we're going to be done in like 2 minutes, but no, this is much more expensive than I was thinking. Remember, we need half a stack of them. But let us start somewhere. We have some garbage cobblestone generators, and I think we should bring down the crafting table. I can't go up and down. What the? Oh, we were making something. We also need something called network IO port, and each one of them requires 8 capacitors. I really don't like making capacitors. But let's start with uh, 3 stacks. We can make it. So fun fact of the day, we never upgraded our cobblestone generators. I think we just went to tier 2, now we need tier 3 and 4. It's fine, all of them have EMC, so we just need the one. And this is probably the most claustrophobic smeltery that I ever made. Also, don't you worry, it's going to get more expensive. So here is cobblestone generator mark 3, which I guess we can have two of them. And here is a mark 4. We just teach it to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These are quests that we should have gotten on episode 2. So you go here. And here, we need a bunch of Zenith furnaces, which does have EMC, so we don't care. There you go. Something has me worried. Why you don't have a pattern? Oh, we have the blocks. Okay, I actually thought we're not spawning them. Okay, so the furnace from Extra Utilities has EMC, but you can't teach it to your tablet. That is weird, but it's fine. I filled in the recipe as best as I could, and now we come to the expensive parts. But first off, uh, do you remember this lava infused stone? One day I was making it and I was nagging as usual and I made an extra one and I was nagging if it was expensive, why did I make an extra one? As it turns out, that was an awesome choice. So that takes care of that. We shall order three more stacks of capacitors and we can make it. Lovely. This dense cobblestone generator is something that we were making but I don't think we have enough. Yeah, well we have six. Oh boy, I have to make so many. Okay, this is a bit stupid but can you be... Huh, seems you can. Do you actually drop the cobblestone generator? Because sometimes they don't drop the correct version. Yeah, I didn't really want to cheat this way. I wanted to make a system. And well, we seem to be done. We just needed one stack. Not sure if I saw something horrifying in this or I was just being over dramatic, but this is not that horrifying. I mean, we're almost done. I just set the pattern for the ultimate furnace. We are going to need one stack. This is from Mystical Agriculture. What the? Oh, of course you don't. You don't know how to make blocks for that. But yeah, this should take care of the ultimate furnace. And now comes the grindy part of making octuple compressed cobblestone, netherrack, and endstone. It's a bit grindy, it's not that horrifying. And actually, I'm just gonna cheat with an energy condenser. I would like to correct myself. It's not really grindy, but it takes time. But that is our compressed netherrack, endstone, and cobblestone. If I'm not wrong, we need two more stacks of capacitors, which we can easily craft. Lovely. We have one stack of ultimate furnaces. Oh, and capacitors are done. Okay, so there you go, half a stack of creative cobblestone generator. And I guess you go over here? Also, it shouldn't look that empty. We have the ones of animation in shulker boxes. I was just doing some calculations and it seems we don't need any more chaos catalyst or chaos ingots. Cause here's the thing, I need one stack in order to make the everlasting guilty mana pool and I need two stacks in order to make the creative generator. That is slightly over the three stacks that we needed. So maybe we should be able to turn them off. How do you turn it off? I don't know how to turn it off. It's fine, we cut the cable. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.